Today I'm going to set up an external LAN coordinator. Why, I can hear you ask. Hi. Well, I'm planning to eventually run Home Assistant on a virtual computer. Which means I can move it around to different servers without switching it off. I can't do that now because there's a, a cabled USB Zigbee coordinator. So it's not going to work if I move it around. The Zigbee coordinator is LAN based. I can point to it wherever Home Assistant is sitting. Anyway, enough waffle. I'll roll the credits. This is an SM Lite SLZZB06M. Um, I'm going to set it up with uh, Zigbee. Uh, let's get in first of all. And what do we have in here? Oh, let's turn it upside down, shall we? Or does it make any difference? Put it all out. So we have a nice box, we've got a controller with an aerial slot, ooh, slots to um, hang it on the wall which is nice, and the other end as well, and a uh, um, uh, Cat5 connector, we have, oh even better, that's clever. I like that. I like things made easy. So this is where the holes go on the wall. That's cool. And nope, oh, a USB um, uh, adapter, a couple of screws that will work, and a couple of sticky pads. They put everything in here. All right, let's see if I can get the aerial out, and that comes out of there. So. I'm going to put that on there, and then I'm going to kill two dogs that have now decided to bark. Right, there you go. So, that goes like that, that goes like that, and we're set up. Let's plug this in and see what happens. So I'm going to use Ethernet, which doesn't want to go in. There we go. That's that end done. Um, I haven't got power over Ethernet here, but the instructions say it can work with both. So we'll give this a go. Right, so we've got some flashing lights, and it's gone orange. I wonder what that means. Let's go and look at the instructions, which are rather good. So I managed to find the coordinator on my DHCP setting. Um, I changed it to a fixed IP address. I've kind of got it. Uh, I've also done a few other things and recorded it all. Well, thought I'd recorded it all. Um, but it didn't work. So we'll just go through what I did. So this is the dashboard. It's quite interesting. It covers everything that's here. Um, in mode, I've left it at the Zigbee uh, coordinator and on the Ethernet connection, I've left everything else the same. Uh, network wise, um, it's using DHCP to do it. I'm going to um, log some feedback about this because this looks like your IP address is set up, but I'm guessing that this is um, if you've not got the HTTP set on. Uh, Zigbee to um, MQTT and ZHA, I've not done anything. Security, I definitely recommend doing this. Enable web server authentication. Put a, uh, I've kept the login name the same, but I put a password. In the future, I'm going to do allowed IPs um, 
but I'm going to change IP addressing very soon. So I'm going to allow everything for there. VPN looks really interesting because um, you could have one of these on a remote um, site and it'll use a VPN using WireGuard to get that forward. So that's an interesting thing. In settings and tools, general settings, I've left everything the same. Um, I've allowed analytics, um, firmware update, I've updated um, to the latest version of the core. And the latest version of the Zigbee uh, coordinator. Now it will do an automatic update. I'm not sure that's a good idea because if you get a bad one, which does happen at times, um, it's going to cause you a problem. So I'm going to add this to the checklist that I do. LEDs I've I've left the same. I've not done anything at all. Time settings I've changed to GMT. Um, for some bizarre reason, it thought that um, the UK was in GMT plus one, but it's not anymore. It's GMT. Bug and debug are interesting. That kind of covers everything that's there. Okay, let's have a go at putting this into Home Assistant. And see how that goes. If we quickly just have a look at. ZHA before we do anything. So in here, and I've got four devices, two temperature sensors, the uh, USB controller and a door sensor. So the door sensor says closed. If I do this, it says open. Um, so we're all working. So if I go back here, and back here, and say configure, and I want to migrate radio. Yes, I want to stop ZHA. I'm going to migrate to a new radio. Is it a combi raspy? No. I can unplug my own radio. I'm not going to, but I could do. I click submit. It says enter manually. I'm going to click submit. And then, if I go and look in here, which is the uh, control planner for the ZL, uh, the SLZB, and it tells me I want an ES, an EZSP. So I need to get a new tongue today, an EZSP, and I'm going to need to know what its socket address is. So that's the one I want. <coughs> Its address is going to be that, and I click submit. And network formation uh, restore an automatic backup. So let's do one from just now. I'm going to click finish and just to be on the safe side I'm going to restart everything oops missed developer tools restart I'm going to restart the whole of home assistant just to be absolutely sure up it comes home assistant has started so if I go into settings I go into uh, devices and services Zigbee home automation I've still got four devices uh, I have uh, a different type of controller 
We look at the door sensor again just to make sure everything's there and I push these two together again there you go it's closed and we're using the new controller because if I go here and dashboard and sign back in again uh, does it say somewhere here I think it does look in that one no it's not telling me there I think it's telling me here um, Ethernet status Wi-Fi status Can't see anything obvious here that says um, it's working, which is just a bit annoying. Yes, it's talking to a uh, home assistant. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.